What is up everyone? Today I'm going to look at a couple filament sensors. If you have a 3D printer or if you've built a 3D printer, but you don't have one of these things, you're probably going to want one. So when I first built some of my machines here, I did my own filament sensor, and which is just basically you can take a switch and wire it up and make it to where filament goes through it and it activates the switch. And when the filament is not in there, the switch is, is open. So that's what I did at first. That gives you a basic switch that helps sometimes but sometimes let's say if you get a tangle in the spool where it's not going to show that you know the filament's not in there it's going to stay like that and it's just going to think it's going to continue printing it's going to keep going so that's when the smart filament sensors come in handy i have two here from big tree tech they have the version one they have the version two and i'm going to look at both of them and show you what the difference is in them and what i like personally about each one and what tequila does not like about them so let's open them up and see what we have here. All right, so this is gonna be the V1. This is the first version they came out with. We're gonna open it up here and take a look. Inside, we've got a card as usual, and we've got our sensor here, and we got some wire and some screws and other things, a piece of Bowden tube. So the thing with this one was, there was some issues with it and they kind of listened and, and made the revision too. For one thing, it's kind of difficult to feed filament through here. When you push it through, you gotta push really hard to get it through inside here. We'll open this up and show you what it looks like inside. But yeah, it makes it a little, that's the main thing with this. It makes it a little difficult to feed filament inside of this thing. All right, now that we got this opened up, we can kind of look inside and see what we got going on here. You can see, that we got the PCB here, the connector hooks to right there. We've got a couple bearings in there and a spring. You can kind of push down here and see it sort of move there a little bit. That's how the filament gets, you know, jammed in between the two, two bearings there. And it is kind of difficult. That is a pretty strong spring. Uh, it is kind of hard to push through there. So it does work. Now the detection length on this one is seven millimeters. So that's pretty much the gist of this. The complaints I have with this is there's actually even a GitHub. I can't remember whose it was or who linked it. I'll try to link it in this video, but it shows what to do to make this thing work right, basically, which is kind of messed up. You buy a, a new part, uh, a new item, and you expect it to work, but you, you got to end up taking it apart. What it is is the space that's between here, this wobble, you pull kind of back this way, and then you take like a post-it note or something, fold it up, and jam it in between there to keep that distance from you know kind of wobbling like that. And the second thing is to grease these. Take these out and you know grease them up a little bit and then put it all back together. And then you should have a good working filament sensor with you know approximately seven millimeter detection length. So that's this one. Now we'll take a look at the V2. This is a V2. I've actually already taken this out of the package so I don't have the foam insert piece for it, but it comes pretty basically the same way. So it looks pretty you know nice. It's got a little bit of a you know more fancy looking design, I suppose. But this, you have this little switch here. If you slide this, it opens that path up so you can slide filament through much easier. So that's, that's very handy. I mean, it, depending on where it's mounted on the machine, it still may be a little bit of a task if you have to reach behind the machine to you know pull this sensor and then kind of get it between there. But anyways, it, it's pretty cool. So they've got that and you know we'll move the box out of the way and you know you got your wiring and stuff here some screws and Bowden tube we'll open this up and take a look at what's inside of this one all right so now that we got this open we can see the sensor here which is basically just checking to make sure this thing is spinning if it stops spinning uh, you're no longer getting motion that you got a jam back here or whatever the reason then it will flag it in clipper as long as you have it all set up right i won't go through that right now but this also has a switch right here so here you can see what happens when we when we lift up on that button there, it opens this area up so we can slide our filament in. And then once it's in there, it flips the switch here too. So you have the switch and you have the encoder sensor down here that's actually telling it the motion that it's moving. So it's detecting the motion as well. That's the two big things with the V1 and the V2 is they can detect motion, which is the smart section of that. And I have hooked this one up and I have not had to you know, open up and shim anything or anything like that. So that was good with this. I do like this one a lot better. Uh, my wife hates both of them because she's used to just pushing the filament through and that's basically it. So 
it is very handy though to have the motion detection on this because if you get a jam on your spool that's where that comes in play very nicely if your spool gets jammed up and it does happen so that is what we love about these smart filament sensors so much now i'm going to show you what the old sensor looked like this is an old sensor that i made so basically all it is is a little hole here and a hole on this side and at the bottom we got a couple screws i'm going to take these off and I got a connector right down here, solder to a switch. Please don't judge my soldering skills on this. It was not easy to get to. So let's look at this. And I ran these for a good, good amount of time, but they will not give you any de detection at all for you know motion. They're just gonna detect if there's something in there or not. So basically it's just a switch right here that when you push a piece of filament through, and as long as the filament is in here, the switch will be pressed in, which will keep it activated and let your machine know that you have filament in there and you have not ran out. Only problem is when you get a tangle and it still has filament in here, your machine thinks, oh, we still have filament. So your extruder's still going, everything's spinning, everything's in motion, but you're not pulling filament through here because it's jammed up out here. So that's the difference in them. And that's why I upgraded to the V2 and V1 when they came out. Any sort of smart filament sensor, that is something you could probably build on your own very simple but that is what we got to work with another thing with this particular one this one goes on a boron so it mounts on the back of a 2020 extrusion right there and then you just you know screw it on right there so as you can see here where the filament was going through after a while what happened was it wore out a spot because it was feeding through like this so it wore out a spot in it there and the switch wasn't really sometimes it would think it was triggered and it wasn't it kind of wore out after a while. I mean, that could have been an easy fix by just making that a little bit bigger and putting a piece of PTFE in there. That, that wouldn't have been a problem, but the fact was we wanted motion detection. So if you're doing any sort of 3D printing, you definitely need some sort of smart filament sensor. Pick one, go with it. Just make sure you have something. This is just my take on these. I personally like the version two, BTT V2, more than any of them. If you end up needing help setting these up, these are a little bit different to set up in Clipper uh, or Marlin, however, you're, whatever firmware you're running. If you need help setting them up, you can join our Discord. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Reach out to me or any of the guys in there. We can help you out with that. But if you have any questions about it, just let us know. Thanks for watching the video. Like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.